All right, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. It's after four, so I will go ahead and mute you all. I think you're all muted already, but I'll just make sure everyone's muted. You're all set. Um, okay, so as always, welcome. I'm Jess. It's nice to virtually meet you guys. If you have questions, I know I've said this before, but don't hesitate to hang around at the end if you want to ask me something, if you're not sure about something we're doing, um, or you need a modification or something like that, don't hesitate to stick around and ask at the end. I'm happy to do what I can virtually to help. So, all right, let's get started lying down on our mats. So go ahead and come to a comfortable position potentially on your back. If the back doesn't feel good today, maybe you turn onto your side or explore different positions with your arms or legs. The arms can be on the stomach or at the sides. The legs can be bent or straight. You know the drill by now. Find a space that feels comfortable for you. And once you find that space that feels comfortable, go ahead and close your eyes. And just start to slow down a little bit. Start to tune into the breath. Notice it becoming a little slower, a little deeper. And just take a couple moments now to enjoy the slowing down. You know, we were talking before class started about how things feel like they're going fast, even though we're not necessarily doing much. Some people are, but a lot of us aren't, and it still feels like it's going fast. So take this time now to allow yourself to slow down. I've been hearing a lot lately of people saying we're all in this together. And while that is true, that we are going through the same pandemic, it doesn't mean we're all experiencing it the same. Everyone is having completely different experiences, completely unique experiences. Some of you might be working a lot more. Others might not be working at all. Some people might feel bored or scared or stressed, or maybe you feel completely fine. And maybe those feelings are changing from day to day, minute to minute, <laughs> and that's all okay. There's no right way to be experiencing what's going on. There's no wrong way to be experiencing what's going on. So the best thing I can offer you right now or suggest to you right now is just take these moments here on your mat to notice how you're feeling, no matter how it is. Begin to notice what space you're in in this exact moment and acknowledge it without judgment. So if you're the one who's feeling bored, if you're scared, if you're stressed, if you're fine, it's okay, but start to notice that feeling. And then as you become aware of how you're feeling, Ask yourself what you need from your practice here on your mat this evening. Start to think about what it is you want to get out of this next hour here on your mat. Do you wanna relax? Do you wanna breathe? Do you wanna slow down? Think about what it is that you need and let that be your intention for your practice tonight. Once you take a moment to think about what it is you need, what you wanna create, set that intention, start to find a full body stretch. So you're gonna reach your arms over your head behind you. You're gonna straighten out your legs if they're bent. Go ahead and roll out the wrists, the ankles, wiggle your fingers and your toes, kind of like you're waking yourself up all over again today. Just kind of moving in any way that feels good. And then on the next inhale, we're gonna draw the right knee in towards us, wrapping your arms around your shins. Go ahead and move that right leg in a way that feels comfortable. Maybe it's a little side to side movement or a circular movement, starting to warm up through the hip a little bit. And then we're gonna take that right leg and come right into a twist. So the right leg is gonna start to come over to the left side of the body. You can twist as deeply as it feels comfortable. That right leg does not have to come onto the ground. Mine's not, mine's in the air. You're also gonna draw the right shoulder toward the ground. It also doesn't have to touch. So my right knee are lifted, my right shoulder are lifted, but they're working their way towards the ground. So take another breath or two here, allowing that back of the body to really twist into this shape. And on the next inhale, we'll start to draw the right knee back through center. We're gonna bend the left leg, place the left foot on the mat, and then start to extend the right leg up towards the sky. Your hands can be behind the right thigh or the right shin, wherever it feels comfortable to hold onto that leg. Go ahead and bring your hands there. 
and then just start to move the leg however it feels comfortable. So you can roll out the ankle, bend and straighten the knee, or maybe you're just raising and lowering that right leg. Whatever feels good, go ahead and do that. Couple breaths, just kind of giving the back of that leg a little love as you start to create some space and opening in the back of that leg. And then we're all gonna take the right foot, place it on your left knee, take your hands to the right shin, kind of press the leg away from you a little bit. So you're kind of pressing that right shin away from you, creating a little opening in the right hip. And then we're gonna bring our arms out into a T, extending your arms to either side of you. And then just let your hips rock from side to side. Your knees will kind of move from side to side a little bit. Just to kind of get a nice little twist and movement in the back of the body. It can be as exaggerated or as gentle as it feels comfortable for you. And then as you make your way back through center, we're gonna lift that leg up off the mat, the left leg, interlacing your hands behind the left leg, flexing through both feet. So both feet are really engaged. You're drawing that left leg towards you, creating a nice little opening in the right hip. You can even take a hand and kind of press the right knee away from you if that feels good. Or maybe you bend and straighten the left knee. These warm-ups and really your whole practice are all about what feels good for you. So try to move a little bit until you find something that feels right. And then that's the right thing for you to do. Let's go ahead and place that right leg back down on the mat. Hug the left knee in towards you as you wrap your arms around your shins. Same things you did on the other side. You can rock from side to side a little bit or maybe make circles. And then we'll start to find that twist. The left leg comes over to the right side. Take a breath in and as you exhale, relax through the back of the body, letting that left shoulder release down, the left knee releases down. Maybe looking in the opposite direction of the knee so you can be looking off to the left. And then slowly starting to draw that left leg back through center. We'll bend the right knee, place the right foot on the mat as you extend the left leg up towards the ceiling. Go ahead and start moving that left leg however you want. It could be rolling the ankle, bending or straightening the knee. Maybe it's simply massaging the back of the leg with your hands a little bit as you draw that left leg towards you. And then beginning to take that left foot, place it on the right knee. So you're kind of making a triangle shape if you were to look at your legs. And then you're gonna press with both hands that left knee and that left shin away from you, getting that nice little opening in the left side of the body. And then again, bringing your arms out into a T. Start to let your hips rock from side to side as your knees release towards the mat. And then as you come back through center, that right leg is gonna lift up off the mat, interlace your hands behind the right thigh, draw that right leg towards you, creating that little stretch in the left hip. And breathing here. And then gently starting to release the left leg from the knee. Bring your hands behind your thighs. As you tuck your chin into your chest, go ahead and rock forwards and backwards a couple times if it feels good. And then we'll all meet in a seated position. So rocking yourself all the way up to a seat. Go ahead and find a cross-legged seated position on your mat if that feels good. If crossing your legs doesn't feel good, you can also be on your knees or maybe with your legs extended. So find a shape that feels good. But wherever you are, sit up nice and tall. You kind of rock from side to side a little bit as you settle the hips in and lengthen through the spine. Before we start to move a little bit, we're going to offer a breath. Or I'm going to take you through a breath that kind of helps calm the body a little bit. It's great for yoga. It's great for those times when we can't necessarily do yoga, but you do have time for a breath. So I'm going to walk you through it first, and then we're all going to go ahead and do it on our own time. You're going to take your right thumb to your right nostril. You're going to inhale and exhale through the left nostril only three times. You're going to do it really full, really slow. So see if you can make it as long as possible. Once you complete those three breaths, you're gonna bring the left 
or the, I'm sorry, the right ring finger to the left nostril and do the same thing on the right side. Inhale and exhale three times to the right. So if you haven't already, go ahead and begin that, closing your eyes, bringing the right thumb to the right nostril, taking those three breaths through the left side as slow as you can. See if you can make that breath longer and deeper and fuller than usual. Once you take those three breaths on the left, you'll close off the left nostril and do the same thing on the right. Three really deep, long, full breaths through that right nostril. Taking as long as you need, the longer the better. Whenever you complete those three breaths, you can release the hand and then just gently start to roll the neck all the way around or side to side if that feels better. Just allowing the neck to move a little bit releasing some of that tension that builds up in the shoulders and the back. And then taking that movement to the shoulders. So lifting the head back up through center, take a breath in as you roll the shoulders forward and up. As you exhale, let them release down the back. And doing that two more times. Inhale, rolling the shoulders out. Exhale, releasing it. And on the next inhale, start to reach the arms up overhead. As you exhale, the left hand is going to come to the mat. The right fingertips reach to the side. We're stretching through the whole right side of the body. Press down through the right hip. Reach the right fingertips further. Feel the rib cage kind of expanding and the muscles under the arm lengthening. On the next inhale, lift it all the way up through center. Use that breath to get taller. As you exhale, take it over to the other side. The right hand comes to the mat. The left fingertips start to reach long, kind of like you're bringing your left shoulder towards your left ear, really reaching that arm to the side of the mat, to the side of the body. On the next inhale, start to come back up through center. As you exhale, hands can come down. Find a wide-legged seat, so extending the legs long, as wide as it feels comfortable, flexing through the bottoms of the feet. On the next inhale, we're going to reach the arms up overhead. As you exhale, start to walk the hands away from the body. This is a deep stretch, so be gentle here. If you're only walking the hands just a little bit away, that is fine. If you're feeling it in the backs of your legs, that's exactly where you want to be. You don't want to overstretch and hurt yourself. It should feel good. But wherever you are, try to use your breath to bring you a little deeper. So on the inhale, maybe you sit up a little taller. And then on the exhale, maybe you fold just a little bit further. And then slowly starting to walk the hands back towards the body. We're going to reach the arms up overhead again. You're going to bring the left hand to the left shin. And then the right hand is going to reach up towards the sky. So you're kind of leaning to the left a little bit, almost like you're making an L shape, lifting that right arm up towards the sky. And then taking that right hand, start to draw the right arm, almost like you're trying to reach it over the left toes. So you're kind of reaching the right hand towards the left foot. Continue to roll that right shoulder open so you're still lifting up through the chest. If this feels good, you can stay here. If you want to try another variation, the right arm can come behind the body, almost like you're bringing the right hand to the left hip, kind of making a little bind here, and then continuing to roll that right shoulder open, looking up towards the sky. On the next inhale, that right arm can extend up again. As you exhale, fold over the left leg. So both hands come down as you fold over that left leg. And then on the next inhale, lift it all the way back up. And we'll take it over to the other side. So the right hand is going to come to the right shin. Left fingertips reach up towards the sky first. So think about making that L shape, that really straight left arm to start with. And then you can go ahead and take the left fingertips and start to reach them over the right toes, rolling that left shoulder open, lengthening through the left side of the body. And then if you took that twist and you liked it, the left hand can come behind the body, 
starting to work it towards the right hip as you continue to press that left shoulder open. The next inhale, the left arm is gonna lift back up. As you exhale, fold over that right leg. And then on the next inhale, lift it all the way back up. And you can go ahead and take your hands, press your legs together, coming to a seated position with the legs together. Kind of tap the backs of the legs on the mat a little bit. And then we're gonna bring our feet to the mat, bending your knees, bring your hands to your shins. And it's almost like we're moving through a cat-cow, but in a seated position. So as you inhale, you're going to start to draw the chest forward. Take the gaze up. As you exhale, press the body away from the knees. So rounding the back, press the chest away from the knees. And then go ahead and move like that. As you inhale, draw the chest forward. Lift the heart. Look up towards the sky. As you exhale, press yourself away from your knees. Go ahead and move through two or three more of those on your own, allowing the spine to start to move with your breath. Letting the breath kind of guide the speed and the movement. Next time we come back through center, you can find a neutral spine, sit up nice and tall. We're gonna do a little boat pose, a little challenge early on. So it's a nice little core exercise. The legs are gonna lift up off the mat. So your shins are parallel to the ground. Your hands can either be extending next to the legs or your hands can stay on the mat if that helps. Wherever you are, we're gonna count 10, nine, eight, seven, really engaging that core, six, five, four, three, two, on one, go ahead and put your feet down and kind of just fold over your legs. Give yourself a little hug, kind of rock side to side. Let that go. And then we're gonna find a tabletop position. So starting to turn over, bringing your hands to the mat, bringing your knees to the mat. Start with a nice flat back. And then we'll move through a couple rounds of our traditional cat and cow. So on the inhale, the stomach releases down, the gaze goes up. As you exhale, the back rounds, press the ground away from you. And take a couple circles or movements here, adding on if it feels good to rock the hips a little bit or shake the head. Do what feels good for you. And that goes for this whole practice. You're at home by yourself. If you start doing something and it feels really good and you want to do it a little longer, keep doing it. Or if it doesn't feel good, maybe switch to something else. Once you complete the round that you're on, we're gonna make our way into our first downward facing dog by tucking your toes, straightening your legs, start to send your hips up and back. And then just move here a little bit, lifting one heel up at a time and pressing it down towards the mat, bending your knees and then straightening them. You can rock your hips from side to side. Shake your head, yes or no. So all those little movements help you start to settle in here. And on the next inhale, we're gonna lift the right leg up off the mat. So you're pointing it towards the back of the room and you're gonna bend the right knee. We're gonna make circles with that right knee. So the idea is that you're really using the hip to kind of guide the motion. So go ahead and take a couple circles. It might feel a little awkward, that's okay. Just see what, see what you can do with that hip. Take a couple circles in one direction, couple back in the other direction. And then you're gonna pause here, start to draw that right knee forward, stepping the right foot in between the hands. If you need to bring the knee down to get there, that's okay. We're all gonna bring that knee down anyway. So you can bring the left knee to the mat. Take a breath in as you start to press the hips down a little bit, lifting up as much as you can through the upper body. And then as you exhale, straighten that right leg, press the hips back and fold over the right leg. We've done this one here many, many times. So you're gonna to start to move through this flow as you inhale, press the hips down, lift the heart, lift the chest, lift the gaze. As you exhale, fold over that right leg. So continue to move in a way that feels good for you. Maybe pausing in one of these positions if it feels good and it feels like you wanna take a couple breaths there. But the idea is that you're working on warming up the hips a little bit 
in the back of the leg, but really focus on the hips here, the front of that left hip when you're pressing it down. The next time we come forward, let's come into our Anjaneyasana or Crescent Moon Pose. So you're gonna either bring your hands to that right knee, or you can lift your arms all the way up towards the sky, wherever you are. Focus on pressing those hips down and then lifting up through the upper body, relaxing the shoulders, taking your gaze towards your hands, and then smiling, because that's important here. We're having fun, that's why we do it. And then slowly start to bring your hands to frame out that front foot. Tuck the left toes, straighten the left leg, and you're gonna step back to your downward facing dog. Again, if you need to bring your knees down to get there and then come to your down dog, that's fine. Meet in down dog however you want to get there. On the next inhale, we're gonna roll it out into a plank position, drawing your shoulders over your wrists. Tuck your tailbone to a nice flat back, engaging the core. We're gonna lower the knees down onto the mat. And then slowly lowering the whole body down. The slower you go, the more of a challenge it is. And we're going to lift up into our baby cobra. So on the next inhale, the upper body lifts just enough so that you can lift your hands up off the mat. Wiggling your fingers here, press the shoulder blades together. And then slowly bringing your hands down to the mat. We're going to press back to a child's pose just for our breath. So press the hips up and back. Finding a child's pose as you bring your hips to your heels. The arms are extending towards the top of the mat. And then we're going to move through that little flow again. So go ahead and tuck the toes, straighten the legs, make your way back into your downward facing dog. Take a breath here. And then on the next inhale, roll it back out into your plank position. Engaging the core, tucking that tailbone, lengthening through the spine. Go ahead and bring your knees down to the mat and then lower yourself all the way onto your stomach again. On the next inhale, you can take that same baby cobra we did before, or you can press your hands into the mat and lift yourself up a little higher. See what feels comfortable. Pressing the hands into the mat is gonna make for a deeper back bend. So if that does not feel comfortable in the back, stay lower. Work on lifting the hands and kind of lifting the chest a little bit. Wherever you are breathing into that space, you're opening up in the front of the body. And then slowly lowering yourself all the way back down and back to your child's pose once again. So press those hips up and back. The knees can come apart, the toes together. Hands can stay towards the top of the mat if that feels good. Or you can stack your hands on top of each other with your head on your hands. Or maybe the hands are by the toes. See what feels good or what feels best. I know this pose isn't always the most comfortable. Some people love it, some people not a fan. That's okay. Take about two more breaths. And we're all gonna start to walk the hands back towards the top of the mat, making your way back to that downward facing dog. Go ahead and tuck the toes, straighten the legs, send the hips up and back. And maybe you find stillness this time. Maybe you take the gaze towards the shins or the thighs and just take about two or three breaths in that stillness. Or you continue to move if that feels better. See what you need. But whatever you do, take those intentional breaths. So really taking some nice deep breaths here. And then taking your gaze towards your hands, we're gonna to start to walk the feet towards the hands, coming to a forward fold at the top of your mat. Your feet can be about hips width distance apart. Bring your hands to your shins. As you inhale, lift up to flatten your back so the spine is straight. As you exhale, fold forward. On the next inhale, slowly start to lift it all the way up, reaching the arms overhead this time, maybe bending back a little bit if that feels comfortable. And then as you exhale, bring your hands to heart center. On the next inhale, we're gonna reach the arms back up overhead. As you exhale, big swan dive all the way down into a forward fold. As you inhale, find that flat back again by bringing the hands to the shins. As you exhale, fold a little deeper. So you're using that inhale to create space. You're exhaling into the space. 
On the next inhale, lift it all the way up, reach the arms overhead. This is called Urdhva Hastasana. As you exhale, hands come to heart center. Let's move through that one more time. So inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, swan dive it down. Inhale, hands come to shins, flat back. Exhale as you fold. On the next inhale, lift it all the way up, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, hands come to heart center. And then you can go ahead and bring the hands to the sides of the body. So come to the top of your mat if you're not there already. And we're gonna find our warrior one. So the left foot is gonna step all the way to the back of the mat or as far back as it feels comfortable, usually further than you feel like it should. The hips are facing forward. The left foot is at about a 45 degree angle. Take a breath in and start to reach the arms up. As you exhale, bend into that right knee. So make sure that that right knee is not going beyond the ankle or the toes. We wanna protect our knees. So if that's happening, you might need to slide the back foot back a little bit more. But wherever you are, see if you can bend a little deeper into that front knee, relax the shoulders. And we're gonna hold for three more breaths. Take your gaze up towards your hands. See if you can slow down that breath a little bit. And then go ahead and straighten the right leg. Step the left foot back up to meet the right. Keep those hands overhead. We're gonna interlace the hands, press the palms away from you as you inhale, lift up. As you exhale, lean over to the left side. So we're pressing the hips to the right, the palms are pressing to the left. See if you can look under that right arm towards the sky. On the next inhale, lift it all the way up, relax the shoulders. As you exhale, take it over to the other side, press the hips to the left. Press the palms to the right. Get as long as you can on the left side of the body. Rolling that left shoulder open a little bit. And then inhale, lift it all the way up. As you exhale, hands can come to the side of the body. Let's find that warrior two on the opposite, or I'm sorry, warrior one on the opposite side. So the right foot is gonna step to the back of the mat this time. Your hips are facing forward. That right foot is at a 45 degree angle. Take a breath in, reach the arms up again. Exhale, bend into that left knee. I needed to slide my foot back to come into it, so you might need to do that as well. Or slide the left foot forward if that feels better. Press through that right hip, draw the left hip back so that your hips are kind of squared off. Bending a little deeper into that left knee as you relax the shoulders, take the gaze up towards the hands. Three breaths here. Really full, deep breaths. Bringing that breath all the way down into the stomach, letting it go. And go ahead and straighten the left knee, step the right foot back up to meet the left, interlace the hands, let's find that twist again, or that bend, sorry. Press the palms up towards the sky as you inhale. As you exhale, take it over to the left side. Looking under that right arm, and then as you inhale, lift it all the way up. As you exhale, take it over to the right side. See if you can come a little deeper than the first time you were here, pressing those hips one way and the palms the other way. And then again, inhale, lift it all the way up through center. As you exhale, let's find that swan dive again, folding forward. Inhale to create a little space, so kind of taking a little lift like we did before on the inhale. On the exhale, we're gonna step it back to downward facing dog. So take as many steps as you need to come back to that downward facing dog. And then settling in once you arrive, taking a breath. On the next inhale, we're gonna lift the right leg, point the toes towards the back of the room. It's a little more challenging. So anytime we do this, if you're more comfortable on your knees than down dog, that's always an option. I forget to say that, but either way. So on the next inhale, we're gonna draw the right knee towards the nose. As you exhale, you're gonna extend it back. And we're gonna do that two more times. Inhale, draw that right knee towards your nose. Exhale, send it back. And one more time, inhale, draw right knee to nose. Exhale, send it back. 
One last time, we're gonna draw that right foot in between the hands, place it down onto the mat, left knee comes down, untuck the toes. We're gonna to come back into that Anjani Asana. So see if you can come a little further than the first time you were here. Bringing the hands to that right knee, we're reaching them all the way up towards the sky. Press those hips down a little lower. Take the gaze up towards the sky. And then slowly starting to bring your hands to frame out that right foot. Tuck the left toes, straighten that leg as you step the right foot back to meet the left, back to your downward facing dog. Or as I said before, if it feels better to come to a tabletop in between, do that instead. It's the same, it's the same movements. You're just getting a little modification. So on the next inhale, we're gonna lift that left leg, point the toes towards the back of the room. As you inhale, draw the left knee towards your nose like you're trying to give that knee a kiss. Exhale, extend that left leg long. And we'll do that two more times. Inhale, draw the knee to the nose. Exhale, extend it long. One more time, inhale, knee towards your nose. Exhale, extend it long. And then we're gonna come back into that crescent lunge or that Anjani Asana. So the left foot is gonna step between the hands. The right knee comes down as you start to lift up through the upper body. Relax the shoulders, press the hips down. Take the gaze up towards your hands. And then slowly bringing your hands to frame out that front foot. Tuck the back toes. Step that left foot back to meet the right. And then we're all going to come down onto our hands and knees. So if you're not in that tabletop already, go ahead and lower your knees to the mat. You can take a couple rounds of cat and cow if that feels good. Or maybe rock the hips from side to side. And then taking the right leg, extend the right leg long, keep the right toes tucked on the mat. So the toes are touching the mat. You're gonna to start to press yourself forwards and backwards, stretching through the bottom of that right foot. And then as you come back through stillness, extend the right leg long, point the toes towards the back of the room. Draw the belly button up towards the spine so you're really using that core to stabilize you here. Take your left hand and start to reach it out in front of you. So opposite arm, opposite leg are reaching in opposite directions. If this feels like enough of a balance, stay here. If you want to add on, take a breath in, draw the elbow, the nose, the knee together, round that back. Exhale, extend it long. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, draw everything together. Exhale, extend it long. One more time. Inhale, nose, knee, elbow all come together. Exhale, extend it long. Hold here. Bend that right knee. Point the toes towards the sky. If you want to challenge yourself further, start to reach that left hand back for the right foot. Maybe you grab the right foot, the top of the right foot or maybe you're just reaching for it. Either way, see if you can kind of lift up the chest a little bit, opening up through the front of the body. And then gently re-extending the arm and leg, and then bringing them both back down to the mat. You can shake your hips out, maybe shake your wrists out a little bit. That was a lot on the right wrist. So go ahead and give it a break if it needs it. And then when you're ready, we'll take it onto the left side. So keeping the left toes tucked as you straighten that left leg. Start to press yourself forwards and backwards. And then coming back through center, lift that left leg up, point the toes towards the back of the room. With control, the right arm is gonna to reach towards the front. So again, opposite hand and leg, opposite direction. On the next inhale, the nose, the knee, the elbow all come together as your back rounds. Exhale, extend it long. Two more times. Inhale, draw it all in through center. Exhale, extend it long. And one last time. Inhale, draw it in. Exhale, extend it long and hold. Bend that left knee, point the toes towards the ceiling. If you want, reach that right hand back. And you can just work on reaching. It doesn't have to be touching the foot. If reaching is where you are, that's great. You're still getting that nice back bend. 
If you have the foot, take the top of the foot and press it away from the body. And then slowly starting to re-extend the arm and leg, bring both back down to the mat, kind of shake your hips out from side to side. And then let's all just sit back on our feet for a second and just kind of shake out your wrists because that's a lot of the wrists. So you can kind of make fists and then circle the wrists in one direction and then the other direction. And take your right hand, point your fingertips towards the ceiling. Take your left hand to the fingertips and just gently draw the fingertips toward you so you're stretching through the bottom of your wrist a little bit. You're not pulling so much that it hurts, but just enough to kind of feel a nice little stretch. And then go ahead and press the right fingertips down towards the mat, and then take the left hand to the top of that right hand, and same thing, just kind of guide that hand into a little bit of a deeper stretch without hurting it. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side, left fingertips reach towards the ceiling, gently draw the left fingertips towards the body with the right hand. And then press those left fingertips down towards the mat. Use the right hand to press on the top of the left, stretching through the top of that left wrist. And then go ahead and release that and just kind of shake out both hands, however it feels good. Give them a nice little break. And then we're going to make our way back into downward facing dog for one or two more little sequences. So when you're ready, go ahead and start to find your way back into downward facing dog. Tucking the toes, straightening the legs as you start to send those hips up and back. On the next inhale, we're going to lift the right leg. Take your knees forward and again, step that right foot in between the hands, using the knees to get you there if you need. Left hand stays down and on the exhale, the right arm is going to lift up. So you're looking towards that right hand. Kind of twisting through the upper body, rolling that right shoulder back a little bit. And then gently placing that right hand back down on the mat. We're going to start to walk your hands over to the left side. So your hands are going to walk to the left. We're coming to a wide-legged fold on the side of your mat. So your toes are facing the same direction now as you start to fold forward. Move in any way that feels good for you. You can kind of rock from side to side, bend one knee, bend the other knee. See what feels good and then do that. Maybe that means coming into stillness or kind of just hanging like a rag doll holding on to opposite elbows. And then we're gonna slowly start to walk the hands back to frame out that right foot. So you're coming back to that low lunge at the top of your mat, spin to the ball of the left toes, and then step it back either to your downward facing dog, or again, you can step it back to a tabletop if that feels more comfortable. So yogi's choice, you choose. As we take it over to the other side, that left leg is gonna lift, point the toes towards the back of the room, look forward, Start to step that left foot in between the hands. Right hand stays down. As you exhale, the left arm peels up. Take your gaze towards that left hand, rolling the shoulder open as you look up towards the sky. And then gently bringing that left hand back down to the mat. We'll do the same thing as we did on the other side, starting to walk your hands over to the right side this time, coming to another wide-legged fold. Maybe doing the same thing you did on the other side if that felt good. Maybe walking your hands really far away from you or really far behind you. Whatever you do, just focus on breathing into this pose, letting that breath kind of create some space in the back of the body. And just play around with moving in a way that feels good for you. And then slowly starting to walk the hands back towards that left foot. Spin so that you're facing the top of your mat on the ball of the right foot. 
And then that left foot is going to step back to meet the right, back to your down dog or back to your tabletop if you prefer. And we're going to start to make our way into our pigeon pose. So the right foot is going to lift again, bend the knee, open up the hip. And then that right knee is going to start to slide right behind the right wrist. You're going to place that right knee right behind the wrist. Start to press the top of the left foot into the mats. Now rock yourself side to side a little bit so that you start to even out the weight on both sides. You're not pressing all your weight into the right hip. If you feel like you are pressing all the weight into the right hip, start to draw the right foot closer to the body. That'll kind of help you shift over to the left a little bit or slide a pillow or a blanket under that right hip. Once you're ready, take a breath in, opening up through the front of the body. And then as you exhale, start to walk the hands away from the body. So lowering down here, finding something to rest your head on. Maybe that means stacking the fists or a pillow or a block. And we're going to hold this for about five to seven breaths. When we started tonight at the beginning of our practice and we were on our backs and you had your right foot on the left knee and you were lifting that up off the mat, that's the same stretch. So if you're ever in this position and it doesn't feel comfortable, turn over onto your back and do it that way. That is always an option. It's a little less intense, but you're still getting that nice hip opener. starting to walk the hands back towards the body as you begin to press the upper body up. We're going to tuck the left toes, step that right foot back to meet the left, coming to your downward facing dog or your tabletop. And then when you're ready, you'll start to take it over to the other side. So the left leg is going to lift. You can bend the knee a little bit, open up that hip, and then start to make your way into your pigeon on the left side by placing that left knee behind the left wrist pressing the top of the right foot down into the mat. A rock side to side, taking all those little adjustments that help you settle in. Maybe draw the left foot a little closer to the body. Straightening through the right leg. So if you feel like that back leg is kind of bent, work on straightening that right leg. And then on the next inhale, lift up through the front of the body. As you exhale, start to lower yourself down. Or maybe you want to come onto your back and take that, that pose we offered in the beginning of class. Finding the shape that's right for you. And then start to settle in here by relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the hips. Slowly starting to walk the hands back towards the body as you press the upper body up, tuck the right toes, stepping that left foot back to meet the right one, final downward facing dog, and then we're all going to meet down on our mat. So when you're ready, you can slowly start to lower yourself all the way down, extend your legs long in front of you, flexing through the bottoms of your feet. You're going to rock your hips from side to side a little bit, settling in. And then take a breath in, reach the arms up overhead. Think about making an L shape with your body. As you exhale, start to fold it forward, bending the knees a little bit if that feels comfortable, bringing your hands to the backs of the legs and kind of massaging them. Whatever feels good here, do that. Taking about two or three breaths here. On the next inhale, lengthen through the spine a little bit. So sit up a little taller as you inhale. And then as you exhale, you can fold just a little bit further using that breath to kind of give you a little more space in the back of the body. A 
And the next inhale, slowly starting to lift it all the way back up. Let's take the left foot, bring it into the right inner thigh, flex through the right toes, take a breath in, lift the arms up, and again, fold forward, this time just over that right leg. Inhale, slowly starting to lift it all the way up. Extend the left leg long. Bring that right foot into the left inner thigh as you flex through the left toes. Take a breath in, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, fold it forward. Inhaling, slowly lifting it all the way up. Extend both legs long. Slide so that your feet are at the top of the mat. And then you're going to start to lower yourself down. Extending your arms long, one vertebrae at a time. Start to come all the way onto your back. Finding a full body stretch once you get there. So just like we did at the beginning, reach the arms overhead. Take a deep breath in. This time as you exhale, hands can come to the sides of the body. We're going to bend our knees, bring your feet to the base of your spine. And then on the next inhale, start to make your way into your bridge pose by pressing the hips up towards the sky. Hands can be pressing down into the mat, or you can kind of wiggle your shoulders under you a little bit and interlace the hands under the tailbone. So whichever feels more comfortable, you decide. Hands can stay right there on the mats, wherever you are. Engage the thighs so the legs are active. You just feel that little bend in the spine. And slowly one vertebrae at a time, peeling the spine back down onto the mat. You can let your knees rock from side to side. We're going to do that one more time. So when you're ready, we'll start to make our way into our second bridge pose. So on the next inhale, again, press those hips up off the mat. Same options as before. Your hands can continue to press into the mat or they can start to come under the hips and interlace. If you're doing the interlace, use the opposite interlace this time. So put that awkward thumb on top. If the hands are pressing into the mat, then just let them stay there. Take about two or three more breaths. See if you can press those hips up just a little higher. And then slowly, one vertebrae at a time, peel the spine back down onto the mat. Once the tailbone touches, let the knees rock from side to side. We'll start to make our way into our inversion. So as always, you have the choice if you're near a wall and you want, go ahead and extend your legs up the wall. If you don't have a wall or you want a more active version, you're going to do the same thing without the wall. Extend your feet up towards the sky. You can bring your hands or maybe a pillow or something under your tailbone to kind of support the lower back a little bit. And then think about pressing your feet in towards the ceiling, so kind of flexing the feet, pressing the heels up. And we're going to hold for about five to seven breaths. Think about slowing that breath down. See if you can count to four each time you inhale, and then count to four each time you exhale. When you're ready to come out of it, you'll slowly start to draw the knees back towards the body and then go ahead and extend your legs long on the mat. Bring your arms to the sides of the body and we're going to press up into a fish pose by pressing the forearms into the mat, lifting the upper body up. Let your head release back if that feels comfortable so you're pumping up the chest a little bit. If it doesn't feel comfortable in the neck, keep looking forward. 
and then slowly start to lower yourself all the way back down onto your mat. Draw the knees in towards you. Wrap your arms around your shins. Give yourself a little hug as you curl up into a ball. Maybe even lifting your head up, bringing the forehead towards the knees. And then slowly placing the head back down on the mat. You can rock side to side or maybe make circles with the knees. Whatever feels good for the spine here, go ahead and do that. And then we're going to make our way into one final twist by extending the arms out to either side. Let the knees release to the right side. You can take your gaze to the left side. Maybe a hand comes to that top leg, to the left leg, and just kind of massages that thigh a little bit. Relaxing through the shoulders as you press that left shoulder down towards the mat. And then on the next inhale, you can start to draw the knees back through center and take it over to the other side. The knees come to the left. Maybe your gaze comes to the right. You can start to close your eyes if they're not already. Start to allow that breath to slow down a little bit. And then on the next inhale, slowly drawing the knees back through center one final time as you begin to make your way into your final position, whatever that's going to look like for you. So that could be extending the leg long. It could be seated. It could be with the legs bent. You know the drill by now. Find a shape that feels comfortable for you. If there's anything you need before you come into your final shape, maybe it's another stretch or another pose. Maybe it's water or a blanket or a sweater or something like that. Go ahead and get what you need to get so that you can feel really comfortable as you settle into our last pose, our Shavasana. And then when you're ready, start to let yourself kind of melt into that pose. The eyes are closing if they're not already. The body becomes a little heavier. Feel your head pressing down into the mat, the shoulders relaxing away from the ears. The back of the body is fully supported. As you completely surrender, completely let go. Allowing yourself to take up as much space as you need, maybe extending the arms really wide or making the legs a little wider. I'm taking this time now to do one final scan of the body, noticing how you're feeling now, noticing what's changed from when you first came to your mat. Maybe you're feeling a little more calm, a little more peaceful, a little more relaxed. Maybe you're not, and that's okay too. Just kind of noticing where you're at now compared to when you started. And just allow yourself to settle into your
slowly beginning to deepen their breath. Gently starting to move your finger, your toes, your wrists and your ankles, starting with really small movements. And stretching in any way that feels good for you. Maybe that's bending or straightening the legs, reaching the arms overhead for one final full body stretch. If it feels good, you can turn over onto one side with the knees bent, resting the head on the arm in a fetal position, or you can stay right where you are on your mat. Let's take these last few moments before you get up and leave your mat to just acknowledge yourself, say thank you, for taking this hour out of your day to pause and do something that's so beneficial for you. Say thank you to yourself. And when you're ready, you can start to make your way back up to a seated position if you're not there already, gently pressing yourself up, keeping the eyes closed if you can, or closing them again when you arrive, bringing your hands to heart center. I'm so grateful for all of you for joining me virtually. I hope you have the most beautiful evening, a great weekend ahead until I see you again. Namaste. Thank you all for joining me tonight. I'll see